Welcome to Civic Mirror. Um, the first thing I'd like for you to do is something that should help you with all of your classes, not just um, GovEcon. Uh, if you do not see a bookmarks bar up here under the address bar uh, in Google Chrome, then I suggest that you click on these three uh, dots and choose settings and then scroll down under appearance where it says show bookmarks bar. This is going to save you a lot of time in all of your classes if you make full use of your bookmarks bar. Close out those settings and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to civicmirror.com. Just type those words civicmirror.com, all one word, press enter, and you're going to see up here the op, the login button. Now, you don't want to have to type this every single time, civicmirror.com, or you can't remember the address or whatever. So the easiest thing to do is just take the button. Your button's going to look a little bit different. It might say secure or something like that. But the, take this button in the address bar and drag it to the bookmarks bar. Once you've done that, now you've got a permanent bookmark here. Every time you sign in to a, a Chromebook on campus, as long as the bookmark bar is showing, you'll be able to have this shortcut. Now, this is a bit long, especially if you start using shortcuts a lot, these bookmarks a lot. And so you might want to make this smaller. So the way you do that is you right click, meaning take two fingers and click on this button and click the edit button and here you can just abbreviate it to CM for Civic Mirror. That way it's not going to take up as much space on your bookmark bar and you can put other things there like Google Classroom, etc. So now we've got that bookmark set up, you're going to log in. Now I've given you a piece of paper or your teacher has given you a piece of paper with your login information and it's going to look something like this. So you find your username and you type in your username here we're going to use demo. Then the country name. Uh, right now you probably haven't made a country name yet as a, um, as a class, so you probably have some sort of temporary country name. That's fine. We'll use, I'm going to use last year's country name, Wakanda. And then you have a password, and it's usually a very complicated password that's hard to remember. And so the first thing we're going to do when we get in is change that password. So copy and paste the password. Well, you'll have to type in the password, which is the reason why we're going to change it. Um, then click login. All right, so it immediately takes you to the settings page, which is good. Um, uh, because then you can get started on changing everything that needs to be changed in order for this to, to go easy for you. Um, You'll have to type in uh, your password here to make the changes on this page. I strongly advise you to put your email address in here. You can tell it not to send you any emails. The problem is if you don't put an email address in here, it will keep asking you for your email address and it'll slow you down when you're trying to get business done. So go and put you know, an email address. I'm just putting email at gmail.com, bogus email address, um, and you just click no, no, no. You don't want any email notifications, so you'll be safe from them sending you junk. Now, the first thing you do is come up with a password that's easy to remember. So new password, I'm just going to put easy here, so I'll remember. It's easy to remember. You, maybe your student ID number, or what, what, what have you, but keep in mind that throughout the course, this is going to become very powerful. So sharing your, your password with another student is kind of like sharing your credit card number. Because if a student finds out what your password is, they can go in and they can empty your accounts. They can send all your money to themselves or to a friend. And so it's a really good idea to keep that password private. So if you have a bunch of friends who know your student ID number, that's probably not the best password. Use a password you'll remember, maybe a password you use for everything else, uh, but make sure it's private. Then click, um, let's see here, I've got to take this here, put the password there, and click update settings. Okay, 
Next, you'll need to change your profile picture. And the reason for that is that um, a lot of people, you may think everybody knows your name, but a lot of people don't. And so um, that's the next step we're going to take. So the first thing you need to do is do a screenshot because um, I only give points for screenshot uh, for, for, for uh, images of a sh uh, just a headshot. Uh, nothing special, nothing funny, something that's very easy to see because the icons on the Chromebook screen are very small. If you do a, a full length shot of your body or from a waist up, your face is gonna be so small, people aren't gonna be able to use it to identify you in class. You want your customers to be able to find you to buy your products. So um, this is worth points. If you don't format it uh, according to these guidelines, then you won't earn any points. So what you do is you um, find your camera app. Usually it's down here at the bottom. There will be a camera picture. Um, if not, you can click here and scroll through all the different apps that are at the bottom. There's this button here that shows you where the apps are. And you should, if you scroll down far enough, you should be able to find the camera app. So I'm going to click on the camera app, and there's some steps that are not very fun here. Um, like I said, it needs to be just a headshot. There's a lot of distracting things in the background. Sorry about that. Um, so take the picture. Okay, and then over here on the side, you'll see go to gallery button. You'll need to click on it because the picture doesn't automatically go into your downloads folder. Um, click on the photo, photo that you're going to use. Remember, it needs to be just a headshot, not a full a body shot or a waist up shot. And then click here on this bot, uh, button that says save to disk. And you're going to save it to your downloads folder. But it won't save until you actually click this button open. Now it's finally available for you to upload. So you go back to Civic Mirror. Uh, change profile picture, choose file, and then if you've clicked on downloads, it'll show up in your downloads. Here's the screenshot image. Upload, new photo, figure out what your thumbnail is going to be. I'm going to make it really tight so it's just my face so people can see me clearly when they look on the on the business page. Oops, I just messed up. There we go. Save thumbnail. Okay, now I have a profile picture that people will actually be able to see. Um, <clears throat> now, the next step is to give your family names. These are the people that you're responsible for. These are the people who might die if you don't feed them and house them. In fact, they will die each year. If a, a person, a family member will die if you do not give them both food and shelter. There are other things that can cause their deaths as well, but those are the two guaranteed uh, death causers. So I'm going to make uh, this person in my family uh, my father, and I'll name him Dana. And this person, uh, my mother, and Kathy. You can pick, you know, whatever relationships you want to be living in your house, but you do have to um, identify the seven people that you're responsible for in the game. I'm going to put my husband, Raymond. I'm going to put my son, Ray Jr., I'm going to put my, uh, where's my gr granddaughter? Do they not have granddaughter? Uh-oh, they don't have granddaughter here. All right, well, I guess I'll have to. I mm -hmm. mm -hmm. guess I'll have to put my grandparents in the house. Arthur. Grandpa. Grandma, Miriam, and I guess I'll let my sister stay with me too. Sister. 
Okay. Submit. Now, you do not need to make profiles for each of these persons. I think that's a little bit too uh, uh, detailed. If you want to, you can. And I've seen students come up with some pretty funny ones. Um, and that's really up to you. And I've seen them put, you know, images and whatnot. That's something that you don't need to do in class if, if, if you just want to have fun with it and make people laugh. When they die, their picture will show up uh, if they die. Hopefully, you're going to be a good uh, good provider for your family and they won't die. Um, but this is where you could have fun with that. If you want to know where to find that, you just click on my family and you'll find this information there. And that's all you need to do for your primary setup.